Yo, welcome back to more March Comes In Like a Lion, episode 11. So last time, Ray once again found himself in a position where he's in a match against this person who is down on their luck um, as far as matches when they lose. Or in this case, like with Matsunaga, it went pretty well the way it turned out. And, you know, he decided not to retire and all that worked out in a very nice way. And it gave Ray some perspective about um, the future of his career, you know, from uh, a very much a veteran player's perspective, a veteran pro player. But in this case, it's um, a person he was going against. Um, Kyoko pretty much made it known to him that when he loses, he takes it on on his family. You know, with Christmas coming up, like, are you really going to make him lose and, you know, cause the fa the little girl there to go through a, a traumatic event for Christmas? Kind of like what he was given um, the Shogi uh, gift, you know, Christmas back then. And, you know, what that represented is importance to his... Um, his adopted father and um compared to uh his siblings he didn't want to like cause that of course because ray's a kind he's a kind person the problem is that uh, very understandably it's a very human thing but he he holds that guilt on onto himself and he was kind of like wrestling with that at the end you know unleashing all these feelings you know built up from his upbringing built up from his opponent and how it, it worked out and uh, acknowledging the beast within him that causes misery that just is trying to survive you know the way he survived using shogi over the years and um how it's destructive now of course it's not his responsibility what his opponents do when they lose it's the nature of a competitive sport there's going to be losers people are going to lose uh, they lose the game maybe lose an opportunity in their career you know not um not progress you know that's just the nature of competitive thing it still takes a toll on people who are, are kind and empathetic like that but um of course it's not ray's responsibility what someone does when they lose but for him to feel that way and acknowledging already his feelings of guilt um you see why he's going through what he's going through uh just combined with how like fucked up he already is like beyond just being a kind person who would feel these things it's uh it's real fucking tough for him so he he exploded he ran and he just yelled and he voiced his anger because there's a lot of a lot of it within ray um so yeah we'll we'll see where it goes from here man but that was a very um very big a very real moment from ray after that went down because it didn't work out you know he, he he begrudgingly took his gift back that i presume presume was for his daughter who knows what he did with it afterwards but that was it so yeah we just have to see where it goes next man but you know definitely feeling for ray as always I, I i don't even know what to say other than just to gotta keep going so let's keep going beginning the episode in three two one This part of the song is so, along with visually, it's just so much. It strikes me as an anime that doesn't change opening. If it did, it would have to be also very fucking good, probably from Bump Up Chicken as well. But it might not change. The old year. Oh no.
Oh man, I saw him on the cover there. At least I thought that was Koda on the cover. Oh man. See the empty water. Oh, you got some in there? No. I thought the cap was off for a second. Yeah, dude. Some meds, water, food, and rest up. Oh, gosh. We need the sisters, man. Where are our sisters? We haven't seen them. Hmm. If only. The same dream. Wow, since he was a kid. Wait, this is the dream? Everyone else is going down. Wait, no, I see some people going up. What is this? No way back. Oh, please be Akadi or someone. Nikaido, like, just someone pleasant, please. <laughs> Might be one of the kids. They're ringing way too much. <laughs> it's Momo. Of course. Oh, my God. Why is she, is she there by herself? Momo, what are you doing here? Oh, there they are. <laughs> they came masked up. Smart. Oh my god. That's from the preview. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> the care he needs. There you go. Oh my god. A taxi. To the doctor. There you go. I love them so much, dude. This is what I wanted. Comfy. Fluff, fluff. <laughs> Just a cold then. Oh, yeah. Smart thinking. Egg porridge. I've never had porridge before, I don't think. Pickled plums. <laughs> He's just grunting and they're taking care of him. It's great. God. Oh my God. <laughs> Yay. Good job, Momo. <laughs> Look at him. That is good. Oh, really? <laughs> the cats are not a fan. Hmm. Is that the first she's heard of it? 
phone's been dead for three days. Gosh. Oh. His dad's been calling him. Hmm. Huh. Wow. I give him a call back. Hmm. Wow. Nah, dude. We're if we're lucky enough to have people care about us, we need reminders every now and then to remind ourselves. Nice. Oh, they got sick too. Or are they tired? <laughs> the cats are all under. Yeah, they all got sick. Oh. Three more people, huh? Grandma and parents. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't mentioned him. Always mom and grandma. Just implied. Oh, look at little Akadi and their mom. <laughs> oh, man. Good memories. Mom's magic words. I feel that. Mom's got some magic words. Oh. Before Momo got the chance to hear them. Yeah. You're the one who helped me. Oh. Damn. They need you too, Ray. <laughs> me too. Oh, man. I feel that. Oh, dear. All right. The new year. Here we go. I like that. Mom and little sis. Oh my gosh. Why does she have horns or ears?
Mom and Chihiro. That's the first we've seen them in the flashback. We've only seen Dad so far. I guess that's to be. I think seeing them for the first time now just shows how he's, how he avoids thinking about them. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god, that looks good. Get in the kotats. <laughs> the mailman. New Year's postcards. Oh, the time before Amazon. This is such a lost sentiment to me. Like postcards. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's like, I'll go get your postcards. What? <laughs> 20 minutes later. <laughs> you got some. Can't look him in the eye. Two of them. Yeah, who from? Of course, the man himself. My guy's rich, dude. <laughs> Takanori, Grandmaster. Huh. Oh, Gramps knows. A bit strange, huh? He's eccentric. Interesting. Aunt Misaki. First time seeing you. Huh. <laughs> Husband's parents' house, huh? <laughs> oh my god, Momo's so cute. And Akari? Oh my god, she got one for Ray. I already like her. <laughs> I didn't expect one for Ray. That's awesome. Oh, shit. That's right. I forgot it was hers. And that's why Akari works there. Oh. Mm. R.I.P. Uh, I mean... Seems like a, you know, a chill, classy little place where you get drunk. Yeah, she deserves her life.
I like that. <laughs> there you go. At Misaki. <laughs> What? Oh my god. Your daughter is a demon. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's mom's sister. This whole family is so wonderful, dude. They're just good people. Oh my. Wow. New Year's food, huh? Huh. Fish cake. I wonder how that tastes. Pork and beans. Huh, chestnuts. Lotus root burdock. This is so outside of my palate. Hamburger turtles. Aw, yeah. Grandpa still got a bunch of life in him. Aw. Always like that Japanese thing of cutting hot dogs into like octopuses and stuff. Oh, spaghetti and gum. <laughs> Wishes. It's some definitely something to be proud of. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Akadi works too hard, man. I know she'd never complain, but man, she does so much for everyone. I know so many women like her. Use this space. Oh. <laughs> and suddenly a bath in the living room. Oh. Huh. You just made it there. Right, right. So yeah, you got to get out the way for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's blushing. <laughs> what an unusual house. Yeah, it's very convenient. Huh. It's just so warm, it's so comfy, it's... Among people who care so much about you, like how can you not? Hmm. Ah, oh, stickers on the. 
on the drawer there. Oh. Mm. Gently embraced together and then dozed away. God. Good. Good. Nice. That's what I wanted, man. Oh, warm my heart after the troubles these past few episodes, especially the last one. God damn, dude. The show is so good at that balance. I want to practice more with my instruments. I have a guitar and a piano here, but I I have not practiced in so long, but every time I listen to an opening and there's not really like any guitar or piano really in this song, but every time I hear an amazing opening or ending, I'm like, "Oh, I want to learn how to play that cuz this show really resonates with me and I want to like to pay it like that homage and just learn it like from my own Enjoyment. I need to practice some more. I'm going to practice after I'm done making this video. A match I really need to win. More sisters. Hell yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Akati is so like, oh man. And I really like what the the aunt said. Uh, actually, let's let's get into it in the post episode discussion. But this image right here encapsulates what I, what Akati does for them so much. Like she's knitting just the scarf that keeps them all warm and soft and fluffy and she's happy to do it. But uh she needs them too. Anyway, but yeah, okay, episode 11. Man, I was, um, so I, I remembered when they showed up, and like the line Momo said, or someone said, and I remembered that from last episode's preview, but I think I maybe even mentioned like an episode or two ago, probably during last episode, I was like, man, we haven't seen the sisters in so long, dude, I miss them, I miss their warmth, their care for Rey, and all, and all these things he's been going through. Um, with Matsunaga, and then with um, his match last time, sorry, that guy's name is slipping my mind. But, um, yeah, so I was like, but it also played into like what Ray realized and it's, it's kind of come up a couple times already where he's, he, he gets stuck in his own like head of what he's going through. Understandably, like it's a lot, but when he's reminded of what those around him have gone through it, he, he feels less alone, which is a very real thing. You're like, like when he realizes the loneliness that Akari goes through, like, she said, if you weren't here, I'd probably just be cleaning and crying, you know? It's uh, understanding other people's problems feel less alone in yours, and you are able to lean on each other. And it's such a great thing that they brought him back for this man, because the show is so great about, um, I think that's, that, that was the longest stretch we, we went without seeing the sisters. <sighs> I say in only 11 episodes, but um, it made the return just so much better for Rey to, to once again, you know, realize that, um, really, and... You know, learning more about um, how Akati feels about that and how she feels she needs Rey. And th yeah, there was just a lot of things I liked this episode. Like, the aunt is great. This whole family is just really fucking wholesome and they obviously care. They're very kind people. It's it's a nice thing to see. Like, the aunt be protective of Akati and the fact that she's like, like what, you want her to just be, you know, doing childcare and taking care of the house this whole time? Like, even if it forces her to, like, I, the, you know, her being able to go out and, and make up and to... 
to do that is um is important you know you don't want the best years to pass her by which is a real thing you know akari is a young woman you know um like i said like she's because i know i know a bunch of women like her who, who give so much of themselves and i'm not saying this is right but they give so much of themselves for their family whether it's out of necessity or, or what have you but she's the type to not complain she's happy to do it because she loves her family so much she's you know she's the oldest sister it's pretty much the mother figure for them now at this point like grandma's not there mom's not there you know aunt aunt drops in from time to time of course you know giving some you know new year money you know coming to check up on them and showing her kindness but akari is the one who takes care of everyone um so she needs she does need her own time you know to to live her life and to do these things but um even though i know she's happy to take care of everyone that's why the scarf image here is so so appropriate like this image here just perfectly encapsulates like akari's whole role yeah good good episode man seeing them take care of ray and ray realize the warmth of everything and even be reminded back then of his his own mother and of his little sister uh chihiro it's a very sad thing but he he like um smiled about it um seeing that and why he f he he f felt so comfortable sleeping there sleeping the best he had in a long time you know in this house where he's only known these people for a little while he reminded him of them of, of something um happy about them happy um about it from back then excuse me words but and it's also very sad of course but it was just nice and bittersweet so yeah again needed that needed that episode like it's not it's not all sunshine and rainbows but it just who gotta warm the heart you gotta wrap the scarf around you sometimes if you're if you're so lucky um to have people like that man and ray certainly does he has a bunch of people who care about him even the postcard from um Harunobu, and also from, I guess, the Grandmaster, like the eccentric Grandmaster, who the Grandpa was like, he's kind of strange, but, you know, he was his Grandmaster, so. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what to make of that. Like, he's from the, the, the chairman, right? So it's like, hmm. He's like, yo, you must have done it. <laughs> I was like, huh? So I don't know if we'll see that plot point um play out some more, but, yeah. That was, uh, that was good, man. So yeah, looking looking forward to more. Of course, I, I could get into all the small things I like about this, like Momo's cuteness and the way Ray is like drawn cutely alongside her as well, and is when he's being taken care of and you know sipping his uh, porridge. It's like it's real wholesome. It's real sweet, real cute. Pretty pretty good stuff, man. So um, as always, this is just a top tier show already. I. Like I, I watched, I've watched so many great emotional shows, and I know I haven't seen nothing yet. Like I, I've seen, I, we've had some really good episodes, but I know there's so much more to see, and it's that's so crazy. Like we were talking about it, I mentioned it last episode, and y'all were talking about it to me, and I was like, yeah, it's like just so crazy. There's so much more to see, but this ranks already so high for me, and it, it's not not in a way that like brings down other like, I guess what you would call emotional shows for me, whatever that means. But it's just, it's, it's, it's arguably at the top of all of them, just cause in, in so many like small, like nuanced and just heart wrenching ways, it just gets me. It's, um, it is like astounding. Like I can't even, it's weird. The show exists. It's that it can just do that. I, I, cause sometimes it's, and it's tough to admit sometimes, you know, not, not everything that other people finds very emotional. I'm sure this is true for a lot of people, but not everything that like a, a big amount of people will find very emotional or they cry to, like, it won't make me cry. And I'll be like, am I like just getting colder? Am I just, you know, like I, I question it sometimes, but it it's, it's made me like kind of reflect a little bit on like what what makes me cry because even re-zero <laughs> made me cry like um a day or two ago you know i was like man what is it about these that hits me more than like other things that people find really emotional that doesn't um hit me in the same way like what hits for me and relatability is a big thing of course but i, th I just think just things that are very like human right just that that tug on just the raw just uh that you you feel and it that just mm, 
Mm, and it's because it's like the top tier of what of like emotional writing like if you can execute just that raw feeling well then you're gonna catch probably the majority of people so maybe that's just unfair to say that only the top tier emotional stuff really gets me but yeah this is basically this is the highest example of that at least for me so far and there's still so much it's so crazy and i feel like i'm gonna mention that for a long time i'm gonna be like 20 something episodes deep and still saying that like how are we only halfway through like who knows what's gonna happen by then and even by then i'll be like double the way through this show than i am right now i'm on 11 at 22 i'll still be halfway what the fuck anyway uh, thanks for listening to me ramble again. This was a good episode, of course. So thanks for watching. If you are seeing this on YouTube and you want early access to more of my March Comes In Like a Lion reactions, check out my Patreon link in the description for $5. You get early access to this series and everything else that I do. You get instant early access. I post a schedule at the beginning of every week. So you can see if you visit my page, you can see for free, of course, like how far ahead I am. And if you want to support the channel that way, I, of course, very much appreciate it. But more than anything... Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.